Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be showing you how we can navigate completely without using our lovely global positioning system for the purposes of lining up and executing an instrument approach with no other aid. Which is kind of fun. Let's get started. So what we're going to do today is we're going to get started by figuring out our flight plan. Well, we're currently just west of Hartford, or east of Hartford I should say, right around Norwich. So I'm going to go ahead and set this one up real quickly. And again, I'm just going to add some of these plans in real fast. We're going to say Hartford VOR. And of course, we're going to be flying into Bradley International, and we're going to be doing it via the ILS for runway six, which is going to be roughly here. It's going to start at Penna. Now, the cool thing here is that I actually opened up the ILS for that particular runway. Let's open the sucker up so you all can see really clearly. Up, 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 up. One of the things you'll notice is all of these lovely positions along this line are all covered by a radio coming from Harvard VOR. Uh, the other thing we know is we're going to be holding at about 3,000 feet today. So what we need to do is find Penna. Penna is actually pretty easy to find because we know two things. First of all, it's intersection between 111.10 and Hartford's 114.9 on the 317 radial. How's that for a mouthful? But we also know that Penna is 12.8 nautical miles away from the end of the runway where the localizer is currently located. So what we need to do first is we need to get ourselves to Hartford and then we need to take a turn. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and dial in my handy dandy frequency for Hartford. Now as always, um, like I said, this is kind of an early beta of this, not early beta, but this is an earlier version of this plane. So we are having some issues as far as being able to listen to uh, those SNAV systems. But one of the things we would do is of course, we'd flip this on and we'd listen carefully to confirm that we are on the right frequency prior to taking any chances on this. So what I know now is a bunch of information that we have. I can see clearly that we are approaching Hartford. How do we know? First of all, you'll see the two flag is positive. The other thing you'll notice is we are pointing in the direction of the two flag, which means I'm going towards it. If I actually cruise over here, I can also see very clearly on my DME that I'm about 4.6 nautical miles away. I'm approaching it at 161 knots, and it's going to take me about two minutes to get there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and center up my little heading hold here just like that. I'm going to cruise on down here. And I'm going to flip on heading mode. Now you're probably saying, oh, you're setting up for something, aren't you? And the answer is, yeah, definitely setting up for something. What I'm trying to set up for us today is getting us onto the Tree 17 radial that's coming off of Hartford D VOR. And the way we're gonna do that is cross the station and basically jump onto it. Now there's a couple fun ways to do this. Uh, personally, I'm just lazy and I just do it the old fashioned way, but there are many ways to do it. Old fashioned basically means I'm gonna sit here, dial in my new desired radial and just sort of run into it when we get to the station. Oh, that's kind of a, it's a valid strategy. It, it, it works. It works. You just have to be kind of mindful of it. It looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to smack into it. And um, the problem with this strategy, of course, is when we do cross the VOR station, which as you can tell from my little timer here, is coming very, 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 very soon. Um, it's going to cause all sorts of shenanigans for us. Now, while that's going, let's get a couple other things all set up inside the computer while we're waiting for this to kind of center up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dial in the localizer frequency here. I'm just going to do 111.10, and I'm going to get that all queued up inside of the computer. Now, the reason I'm doing that is I need to find this intersection. And unfortunately, this is a procedure turn for us. So we're actually going to have to execute a procedure turn while we get there to flip ourselves back around. But I'm not... That procedure turns don't scare me, so I'm not worried about that. So we're going to, of course, cross that with the localizer of 111.10. So there's our handy-dandy little cross. You can see our number is going to get really, really small, and it's going to get a little bit bigger. One thing I would like to do, though, is I like to do a little bit of climbing, because I'm a little tiny bit low here. Let me go pull that nose up just a little bit. Whoop, whoop, whoop. See the needle freaking out? Whoop, whoop, whoa. It always does that. Again, your navigation hold in the real world for VORs is garbage. So kind of keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and get that programmed into the backup here. Do 111.10, go ahead and do a little flipper flopper. And what you're gonna notice is our little ILS glide slope and our localizer starts to show stuff right away. We know we're gonna be crossing Penna when this needle is centered and this needle is centered. Uh, the other thing we need to remember too is Penna is at 3000 feet, which you can see our aircraft is doing a nice pretty relaxing climb up to. I do want to give myself a little bit of coverage. The weather is not great today, but again, we don't do these things because they're easy. If they were easy, we'd be using like GTN 750 or something like that for this. We do have a procedure turn today and our procedure turns are not scary. It just means we have to turn around. <laughs> That's all there is to it. So let's do some uh, quick little working this out. So we're gonna continue along the 317. Again, not a long distance, by the way. We're gonna cross Penna, one of the two needles center, and then we're gonna go ahead and go 
We're going to do a nice little teardrop entry here. Do one of these. Spin ourselves around. Latch on to the 5-8 radial. That is going to take us down to our lovely place down here at Bradley. We're also going to, of course, do an ILS approach, which um, we'll get there when we get there again. No mystery there. So what I like to do during this segment of the flight is I like to do 180 checks per second, just to make sure I'm not going crazy. So what I'm looking for is this needle to start moving. I know I need to stay on this. I know I'm moving away. I wish that would go away. I know I'm moving away. I hate that. I'm moving away from the station which is what I want. This number is getting bigger, which is correct, which also means if I switch to nav two, this number should be getting slightly smaller. Slightly smaller. Hey, there we go. And the reason I know it's getting smaller is I'm heading towards it, right? So let's use a little bit of the magic of time acceleration here to help us out as far as getting a little bit closer to our destination. Like I said, these things, um, it's so much fun to do stuff like this. One, two, let's go ahead and give it a couple taps of your time acceleration. My brain always uh, thinks of the lovely Pink Floyd song Echoes because it's just, <laughs> it's got that kind of uh, sort of relaxed vibe whenever you're doing a you know, long distance travel kind of a thing like that. I don't know. It's just, I always think of it whenever I'm doing anything like this. But we're going to enjoy our climb. You can see this number is getting bigger, which is what we expected. And we're basically halfway to Penna. Now, I know you're sitting there going, how do you know we're halfway to Penna? The reason I know we're halfway to Penna is because I know the rough distance between the two. <laughs> So we're just going to cruise along in just a few seconds. And remember, ILSs are very, very, very sensitive. This thing is going to be doing its happy dance, and it's going to be doing it, and of course, letting us know that we have to get ready for that procedure turn. So the procedure turn, like I said, don't panic. It's not as scary as it looks. But I do want to actually slow down time a little bit here, because I am getting awfully close. Like I said, I can see this number getting right around 17 there. So I'm going to get ready for the procedure turn. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this around to the opposite direction of where I know we need to go. We're going to be riding the 5-8 radial down to the ground today, which is going to be over here, which means I need to execute a left turn around and spin us all the way around to be able to line ourselves up with it. So what I'm going to be doing after we cross is executing this turn and then executing in the opposite direction again. Hey, nobody said instrument flight. It was easy. Of course, if you have an ILS display or a video, I'm sorry, GPS display, this is easy. So one of the things I'm noticing here too is you'll probably observe that this number is getting pretty big. If I switch to our other one, you'll notice this number is getting dastardly closer to 12.2 nautical miles. When this hits 12.2 nautical miles, we know we're going to be crossing that particular point. Now, if I go ahead and grab my little ILS here, I'm going to pull that down. I forget which one I actually got going here. You'll have to apologize if I got the wrong screen for a second there. Uh, one of the things you'll notice, of course, is we're cruising along this sucker right here. This is our 12.8. Bam. That's how we know we're going to be hitting that point there. So we're doing, we're doing okay so far, as they say. All right. This is the fun part. Look, look, 12.8. Look, look, look. It's working. See, see, see. Look, 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 look. <laughs> Penna. All right, let's go ahead and execute our uh, procedure turn here. World's laziest procedure turn. Hey, it's looking pretty good on the side of things. All right, so now what we did is we crossed it. Now we have to do some really fancy switching of frequencies here. Let's go ahead and get this all dialed in. Bop, 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 bop. We're going to go 058 here. 058. Bop, bop. And we're all set. So what we're doing now is we're executing our procedure turn. Like this is where we need to be, it's over here. We're basically executing a big old left turn and we're just gonna kind of fly out just a little bit. Again, we wanna give ourselves a little bit of room before we try snapping back around the other way. So I'm giving myself just a little bit of room. You know, like I said, there's many different ways to do a procedure turn. This is the easiest. It's just a 180. And that looks good to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and order the plane to go ahead and flip around. Ugh. Now, the biggest mistake people make with these is they try to turn um, basically right at it, maybe do like a 1-5. It's going to be too strong. We're basically going to slam into the localizer and overshoot it about 10 times. So uh, kind of keep that in the back of your head. All right, let's go ahead and flip over to this. You can see we're 15 miles away from Bradley, so we're a little outside of the protective airspace here. Part of the fun, as I like to say. All right, we're swinging around. Time to get ready for landing here. Go flip on some landing lights. Um, you're not going to see the landing lights in this plane. Good time to go ahead and take a look at our system. Settings are looking pretty good here. Uh, one of the things I like to do, too, you can actually track the radar and change the range. Obviously, the only range that matters now is 20 nautical miles. So that looks pretty good. Oh, do you see how we overshot it? Do you see how we overshot it? Just like I promised, we overshot it. See that? See how easy that is to do? So one of the things is you do want to make sure you give yourself a little bit more room than I did when you take that turn. But it's okay because Penna is, remember, at 12.8 and we're at 15 right now. So we have a little bit of ways to kind of come back over to it. So like I said, I'm not, not panicky or annoyed or anything like that. Again, part of the fun, everyone part of the fun. So what we're doing now is we're basically lining ourselves back up with Penna. And if I know anything, we're probably going to have to hit this a little bit steeper. Let's do it about there. Ah, oh, a little bit sharper. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. Yep, the needle's centering up. Got to activate approach mode here. 
and that should get us really, really well lined up. It's not going to be perfect, but I think it's basically going to cross pen up pretty square here. And you can already see my airplane is automatically adjusting itself in the other direction. And the reason it's doing that is how darn close we are to actually crossing all of our critical components. Oh, I got the window. There's nothing to see, folks. And now you can see we're just about here. It's about, remember, 12.8 was Penna, and we're just to the right of Penna. So we're probably, Penna just went by. Like, if you could see Penna on the ground, Penna would be right here. It's like right where the edge of this cloud is. So we're just a little off, but again, that's not too bad. But one thing we can see, of course, is the glide slope indicator is starting to show that we're starting our descent here, which is totally okay. In any second, there it is, just like I promised. You can now see that we're starting to capture the localizer here, as well as capturing the glide slope. Now for us, this plane is very, very easy to do an instrument approach on. It is just wonderfully solid it just it, it just goes like you'll never ever have an issue with this plane because it's just such a heavy plane so one of the cool things of course is this will be crossing about the same time this will be crossing and these numbers are naturally going to be getting a little bit smaller as we go down so now let's go ahead and do some homework uh, let's go ahead and open the screen up again so that you all can kind of see what's going on as far as homework goes home monitor so we're going to try to find janet honey so we know that Janet is located at the 327 radial and that Chetix is located, I'm sorry, the Honey is located at the 337. So one of the things we can do actually is we can actually go over to 114.90 here, pop that on. We can actually come down here and we can dial in their individual radials. So if I pick the 317 radial here, for example, uh, 317 is about right there, that would be that particular radial. Now the problem, of course, as you probably could guess, is we've crossed that radial. <laughs> Janet was at 9.9, .9, so let's do Honey. Honey, if you remember, is a 327, lucky numbers. 327 radial is right there, and you can see we've just crossed that one too, and you can see we're just about the correct distance. So our next radial, of course, would be, I'm sorry, Honey, which would be, uh, let's see, we need a 337 radial. Sorry, I'm getting my numbers confused. Trying to fly the plane at the same time as fly the plane. There we go. So if you take a look real quickly here, you can see that we're just about to cross that radial as soon as that line crosses the center here while we're already on the localizer approach. So you can see it's just about centered. If you look over at my distance, the distance should be about 6.9. So when this is 6.9, you can see we're just about in the correct spot there. Go ahead and pull my throttle back. Start getting ready for some landing here. Remember, we've done this entire flight without GPS, and I haven't looked out the window. I'm doing that intentionally. Let's go ahead and secure the plane. I've actually flown without pressurizing the plane the whole time. <laughs> you can see we're on glide slope, we're on localizer. We have 5.2 nautical miles to go. And again, we've done all of this, and there is no other crossing. But we know we crossed Jetix right now because we just crossed the 4.9 DME on this localizer. Looks pretty good to me. I'll go ahead and flap that last slap of flaps. Clap, clap, tap. Go ahead and give us some rims, ripums. Looking good, looking good. Everything's looking lovely. One of the things we need to be thinking about, just in case things go wrong, of course, is getting ready for the missed approach. Do 113.0 here, just in case uh, something goes wrong and we can't find the runway when we get to the bottom. Looks good to me. Our radar altimeter, you can actually see it starting to wind down. We have about 600 feet of stuff underneath us right now, which checks out. At about 98 knots. 20, 20 inches, 22 inches, something like that, depends. Looks good to me, looks good to me. We're a little to the left of the localizer. Aircraft is nice and dirty. It's a dirty, dirty airplane. Looks good, looks good. We're a little high, a little high. Speed's a little high. Let's see here, waiting for minimums. It's gonna be 200 radio. Careful, a little off. Oh, we're still a little to the left. This might not be good, we're also a little high. Should have flown this last part by hand, but then I'd have, I'd have to stop talking. You know how much you love to hear the sound of my voice. I don't like to hear the sound of my voice. Get ready for minimums. 250, 200, 200. Let's land the plane. <laughs> so as you can see, GPS not required for instrument flying. Now, the important thing that you have to remember, though, is you have to be able to stay organized. And uh, one of the biggest mistakes people make uh, when they're learning to fly without the aid of GPS is uh, they allow themselves to kind of get overwhelmed with the moment. So it makes it a little more challenging to do. There we go. Eh, not the best landing, but good enough for today. So as you can see, it's a really, really cool skill. It's uh, fantastic. It'll make you earn it. And of course, in the real world, you have to remember, you also have uh, people on in the 
lovely, lovely control tower is kind of helping you out with this process to make it a little bit easier for you to safely get where it is you need to get on the ground. But it's also worth just being familiar with the process because it's so rewarding when you do all that work without any of that magical modern guidance and still get perfectly safely to your destination. And again, my landing could have been a little bit softer. And again, some of my explanations a little bit clearer, but it's so fascinating, so incredible that you can do things like that. Enjoy.